Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the second of our series of Ireland games. We're covering the Uruguay game and we're giving us our match reaction from the game. So we'll yeah. kick things off with the lineup then. Any yeah. changes made? Any changes? The only survivors being Randolph, Christie, and Duffy. Um, Kevin Long came in for his first international start. Obviously, he's played a lot for Burnley towards the end of the season. Um, Ward in a left back, first choice. Um, Whelan in defensive midfield will probably start against Austria. Then you'd Arthur yeah. and Hendrick um, alongside him, and then Brady, Johnny Hayes from Aberdeen, and Johnny Walters up front. You captain the team as well. So fine um, job he did. Yeah, he was brilliant. Um, Josh, what did you make it again? Then yeah, it was a dominating performance. Something I wasn't really expecting going into the game, to be honest. Uh, although arguably Uruguay's best player, Luis Suarez, was out injured. And Their second best player then went uh, off injured after. <laughs> yeah, it, did, it probably didn't help. But look, from an Irish point of view, no matter who we're, who we were playing, you can only beat what's put out in front of you. And it was probably the one of the most dominant friendly performances I've seen from Ireland in quite a while. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and it's just in regards, they're probably the most dominant we've seen since we beat Bosnia in the qualifier. Yeah, uh, to get to the Euros, uh, I would say. Yeah, and like at the end of the day, um, you had Cavani and Suarez obviously out for Uruguay, but they're still third in South American qualifying. They're still a good side all round. Gadine didn't play either, but still a strong back four that we scored three goals against, like. Casares, who played for Southampton at the end of this season, but has made most of his career at Barcelona and mm -hmm. Juventus. Jimenez played in the Champions League final last year for Atletico in the semi-final this year. So they're not slouches at the back and we got three goals against them. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about the first goal then, will yeah. we? Great finish. Absolutely. Great finish like, he, he made it from, from nothing. And like, it looked like the, the ball had gotten away from him and then uh, he got like a lucky break. And then he didn't really need a second chance. He just took took it away in the top corner. The keeper had no chance. Something else. No backlift at all on the shot. Like it was just yeah. just fought straight through it. No no yeah. swing back or anything. Which is an absolutely fantastic finish. Yeah, I think he led overall during the game. I think he led the line really well. Um, the time he was on the pitch, obviously, um, Daryl Murphy came on for him. But while he was on the pitch, I think he really stepped up to the plate as captain for the day and everything like that. And if he plays next Sunday, he'll probably be captain again, barring a John O'Shea appearance at centre half, which I don't think anyone's really hoping. No, I don't think that's <laughs> going to happen. Eh? Um, and then we moved on to we had Jimenez score seven minutes before the end of the first half. Yeah. Is it all on Darren Randolph? Yeah. I I don't think so. I I actually kind of feel sorry for him in a sense. He, he, he should, shouldn't be coming out for that ball, yeah. Yeah. But I don't think he deserves the level of criticism he's been getting for the one mistake he's made in the whole game. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I so think, I think it backtracks onto a few at West Ham at the tail end last year when Adrian came back in ahead of him. Yeah, I, I think, think his decision making his shot stopping's great, but his decision making is uh, quite poor in situations like that, and obviously shown again. I think um, Irish media were probably waiting. Just waiting for the first little mistakes yeah. that he made to really jump on it. Because yeah. as you said, with West Ham towards the end of the season, he really started to struggle a little mm. bit. Lost his place to Adrian after them, two horrible mistakes. Um, and I think he's... He'll probably stick with him on Sunday. But he didn't cover himself in glory with that cross, for sure. Because Jimenez isn't, Jimenez isn't Godin. He's not a 6 foot 3 giant. And Randolph got nowhere near him. I think I think he was getting nowhere near anyone knows that. Yeah. <laughs> and it was it's gonna work swing. Flaffing at it like it's all anyone had to do was connect with it and it was going in. He, I think Uruguay might have even known that and we're waiting to, to pray on that to, to yeah. flick one in off him. Yeah. Speaking of nearly flicking one in, I thought uh, just before actually Walters had score, Shane Duffy came close with a header as well. And then they went uh, close then hitting the crossbar with Caceres with a great header. Yeah. He met it very well in fairness. Um I think Duffy's header was just typical Shane Duffy, really. Um, he's just throwing in, his body in, anyway. Yeah, he's an absolute terror in the opposition box. Though. We've seen that when he kind of came in in the Euros, that he's, he just meets everything in the air. He's brilliant. Uh, he's got just a great leap for a central defender in terms of attacking the ball. He's a big lad, yeah. yeah. Um, and next season, you know, obviously we're talking about in the short term, but next season him being in the Premier League is going to do him the world of good as well, I think, in an Irish sense. I, I yeah. wish he had to stay there every time, but sure. I'm always got rid of him. Or Martina, ah. sorry. Yeah. Him, yeah. And, him and Clark in the Premier League next year is obviously a really big thing for us as well coming into yeah, yeah. the, the, the amount, World Cup the season. The amount of the squad now, that, like of our, of our main squad that are actually coming in and they're playing at the top level, it's great to see. Well, you even look at the team that started yesterday, Randolph's in the Premier League, Christie's not, um, Duffy will be next year, Long and Ward about the Burnley, 
Whelan, Hendrick, Arthur, all in the Premier League, Brady in the Premier League, Walters yeah. in the Premier League, Johnny Hayes nominated for Scottish Player of the Year. Now, it's it looks a, mo- a lot more positive than it did five years ago. Yeah, the, the rebuild is uh, <laughs> yeah. starting to finally take shape. As far as um, uh, Robbie Brady, then uh, I thought he was, his deliveries were fantastic. Yeah. We've missed them. He's not been fit. Big time. Big oh, and time. it's not. There have been a couple of games for him where he just hasn't done it. Yeah. Which is which is weird mm. for Brady because he does possess like a wand of a left foot. But I think for me, the way the way we play, obviously we can we can we can pass the ball now. We're not like we were under yeah. Chapatoni. But Ireland's main strength has obviously been physical going forward, and when when Brady can put a ball in like that, it really helps our game. Yeah, yeah. like uh, going forward, the next five to ten years, if you keep Robbie Brady fit and Shane Duffy keeps his form up. Shane Duffy's going to get a lot of international goals, isn't he? <laughs> just from set pieces yeah. alone. It's like the new Richie Dunn because of the size of him. I don't mean as a player, but just because of yeah. his kind of size and presence in the box, he will scare opposition uh, defenders. Yeah. Obviously, um, in an e- obviously coming from an Everton fan sense, um, we lost Coleman against Wales and Christie has come in for the last couple of games. <laughs> <laughs> what did you make of his performance yesterday? I personally thought he was absolutely outstanding. Same. Weren't you not uh, roasting him there the other day? Defens- I, was- <laughs> I still think defensively he's a bit suspect, he but was we not, haven't seen it. He wasn't at fault for any of the goals. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought, he, I thought he was superb. I always think he does a solid job for us. And uh, I thought he took his goal well. He, I mean... Uh, um, Hulin's going to get the assist for the goal, but I thought yeah. uh, Christine made the goal himself. And to be fair, it just it was a cross shot. Yeah, it, was was, it wasn't. It wasn't. I thought that's where John would have made the goal himself. I thought you were saying he was assisting himself to pop it in. Like, yeah. Well, he he, he ran at Casares yeah, and then yeah. he frightened the life out. Casares should have should have committed to the ball though. He should have like the big. Yeah. Then he, he turned into Ronaldo. This is all these yeah. step moments. <laughs> <laughs> like, but you see it and he obviously had throughout the game scared Casares with his pace. Yeah. Going out wide, Casares really bought on him going out wide, and even when Christie comes in onto his lesser left foot to kind of play the ball across, Casares a stronger foot is his right foot, and he just doesn't get near him with a tackle. Mm. You know, he's coming onto Casares' natural defending side, which should really make it easier for him to defend it, and he just didn't get anywhere near it. Yeah, again, he's another big, big boy, isn't he? Yeah, Christie is a scary lad <laughs> going to tackle with. I'd say, like, he's a big physical man. Yeah. Um, and another big physical quick man got the last goal, fifth, or thirteen minutes from time. Yeah, James great, great, great ball. Yeah, from uh, uh, Darren Murphy. Them. Yeah, great ball. ball. Like uh, uh, just, finish. Uh, yeah, but the, he just showed the like the passion to get to the ball there for us. He wanted it more than uh, the Jimenez, yeah. and then the finish was superb. In fairness, it was very much like his goal against Austria. Yeah, it was nearly nearly mirror image. Yeah, he's uh, took it well, and whenever he seems to put on a green jersey, he just seems to step it up at a whole new level. He's been um, phenomenal for Ireland over the last the last eighteen since years. O'Neill, months, since O'Neill years, came yeah. in, and O'Neill seems to get the best out of me with that Sunderland. Yeah, uh, when he, um, I know, he, I think Steve Bruce brought him in, but Martin O'Neill was the one who gave him his chance, and mm. that's when he really came to prominence. And that's when we were all like, it was the Euros two thousand twelve, and everyone was like, "Oh, get McLean in the squad. He looks mm. like this next big thing." With McLean and Coleman that we all wanted. In the yeah, squad yeah, and then and McLean got in with Coleman, didn't? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we were looking at McLean as the the, the new the new um, godsend that was going to. New game in Dolph. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he's he's stepping up to it. He, he, he as you're saying, like the passion when he puts on that that green green jersey now, like he's. He's an absolute, an absolute leader in the team, and it was great to see him as well in the game before, captain of the team, and, and really stepping up and being a leader. And you can see it means so much to him just yeah. on that green shirt, and that's what I love seeing yeah. about uh, players like him. And I used to see it with Robbie Keane as well. That they just got you got the best out of them when they went into an interview. Robbie Brady, shirt, I think Robbie Brady's in that mold yeah. too. One hundred percent. Like they come into and the probably, maybe Jeff Hendrick as well. Yeah, they come into the role of like on a different, and Coleman obviously on a different co- with a different country. Obviously, this is but Miroslav Klauser is the closest you'll get to a Robbie Keane in the international sense, I think, anywhere, where he just closes as an average club striker who was just unbelievable at international level. And we seem to... Podolski was similar enough, wasn't he? Yeah, a little bit. Podolski was yeah. similar enough as well. Podolski was a little bit more successful, I think, than closer at club level. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just in the sense of all the players you mentioned there, we seem to be festering a lot of those players in now who are giving their best performances in a green shirt rather than a club shirt. And Shane Long. Yeah. As well. I think that's really important for the country because a lot of those players don't play every week for their clubs and it's important that they have the passion when they do come into the side 
to just give yeah, out. I agree. That's everyone. why I don't. That's why I don't mind them playing for lesser clubs in the Premier League as long as they're playing top level football. Yeah. Because at least they're getting in, and that's what I said about James McCarthy. If he was to go elsewhere, I wouldn't be grudgy. He's a, he's he's a really good player. But if he was to go somewhere and he was starting to get foot first team football and uh, he could stay fit, then in an ideal world, that's what I. Carthy out now for the Ireland squad. I mean, ha- uh, Harry Arthur in there. I have to say, I, I, I mean, he, he's filled his boots pretty well, in fairness. No, yeah, no, he's absolutely Arguably man of the match. Yeah, absolutely. I think he came in, he'd done really well. He'd done his defensive duty, which they went a lot of quite well. But going forward, he, he gave us a lot. And for a man who, unfortunately, ha- we haven't seen a lot in an Ireland shirt due to no, injuries and per- injury, personal yeah. circumstances and a couple yeah. of other things. But he's done himself no harm there against Uruguay. He's done really well. And I think he'd be very unlucky to miss out against Austria. Yeah, I think we'll talk about Austria in the preview video for that game, but um, in this game, a lot of Ricardo was the outstanding player for us. He, we played really, really well against Uruguay, and as you said, it's one of the best performances we've seen in a long time, and I think he was vital to the entire way we played. He drove us forward, his passing was outstanding, he made some big tackles as well. Got the fresh air? <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. He's just something very, very different. Over. Yeah. Like, I've been very excited to see him and, Hend- him and Hendrik play side by side in the midfield. Yeah. I would love to see uh, McCarthy in behind them too and let them two just do, do their role in front yeah, of McCarthy. Yeah, I prefer to see McCarthy sit there instead of Whelan because yeah. Whelan's agent. I mean, yeah. I, I know that Whelan gets a lot of stick, but I actually I I'm, actually have liked him in an Ireland jersey. Yeah, he does his job, but I, I, again, yeah, I'd like to see McCarthy in there. Like, it's looking very dangerous, McCarthy, Arthur, Hendrik. Yeah, we suddenly look like... Yeah. Um, <laughs> you look at um, you look at Wales as central midfield, and you look at um, Allen, Ledley, Ledley, and Ramsey, mm. and that looks a really solid midfield. Obviously, Ledley is kind of similar enough to Whelan in the fact that he's now aging a little bit yeah. and getting on, and um, they kind of need to find someone to replace him. But we look as strong as them, and they've got so many plaudits for the way they kind of play on the break with yeah. Allen and Ramsey, and I think we could be very similar with Arthur Hendrick, and then eventually McCarthy, but. Whelan in there against Austria on Sunday wouldn't bother me at all. I've yeah. always rated Glenn Whelan as just a footballer. I think he's been crippled when he was under Trapattoni and the fact that he had to play so deep. Yeah. Mm. And he was a scapegoat. When it, yeah. it never went wrong. Yeah. Um, he was the one that everyone wanted to blame. And, and if you ask most Stoke fans, and it's always very well, like widely known that like they love him. Yeah, they. I think they're going to be good to see him go now. He's obviously yeah. out the door at Stoke and probably on his way to Aston Villa or maybe Burnley as well he's being linked with I hope he goes to Burnley I hope he stays in the Premier League for him but at the same time he'd probably play every week if he was at Villa he might not well, he um, could go, go to Villa and bring them back up, you know. He could you never know. Yeah, maybe well, as far as uh, Arthur was uh, the, I think uh, the man of the match. Uh, he was voted in the in the actual match, but um, yeah. we'll give our uh, ratings for the players, I suppose. Starting yeah. with Randolph and goal. Yeah, um, you were trying to get him a six, but yeah, there's no. no way he's getting you're a six after that luck. mistake. <laughs> um, I just, I sorry, think, Darren, I tried, man. I think more so because he had very little to do apart from that. Um, if he had have made a couple of good saves or whatever, maybe you go, yeah. Look, it's one mistake, but he didn't really have much to do apart from yeah. that, and he got that wrong. So there's only so much defending you can do in that case. But that's just, just the hard life of being a keeper. You know, you make yeah. one mistake, and that's your whole game ruined, your ratings ruined. You know. What I mean? yeah. But anyway, yeah. yeah but it was a uh, right back, himself. yeah. Cyrus Christie, I think he gets a solid eight. Yeah. Uh, he was. He never looked kind of in, in any way trouble uh, in trouble, like. As much as he wanted to slay them as a defender, he wasn't. He wasn't challenged defensively in this game, which hopefully he doesn't get challenged defensively for the next five yeah, years. I, every I, time he plays, he'll like, look great. I think uh, his trek going forward scares the opposition a bit, like Coleman. Yeah. So that they they don't he if he's doing more attacking, then that's going to obviously work bode well for us. Anyway, yeah, solid eight for him. I thought he was well deserved. I think uh, he's looked look good in every Irish game he's played. Okay. Yeah, he does a solid job every I time he plays. Can't see any problems with him? Might be back to that saying. You know, Duffy, uh, he's starting to get a few minutes under his belt for the last two games. I think, it, um, I think O'Neill's trying to get him fit now for for the game against Austria. I think yeah. he'll be a starter no matter what. Now, uh, I think he's a future captain of the country. Yeah. To be honest, he's I think he's outstanding. He's the best uh, apart from James Cowan. He's the best defender we have. Um, yeah, no, I know. I, I agree there. He's. Him and Clark, exciting time going Clark forward. can be a bit reckless, but um, I, I think under Benitez, he might give him a bit of a snap out in the Premier yeah. League as well, I feel like. Him. Yeah. 
Um, I the next one then is Kevin Long, who made his first star for him. I really, really rate him as a footballer. Um, Ooh, Pompey friend. <laughs> he's only there for a month. I can't yeah. really give him anything for Pompey. Look at the grin your face that um, he's there for a month. <laughs> Um, but I think the games he's played for Burnley when he's come in the last couple of weeks of the Premier League season he's looked really really solid and I think in the future he can really push on and challenge with John Egan and Kieran Clark to be there alongside Shane Duffy um, and he started off really well with yesterday against Uruguay obviously Stuani played up front for most of the game but yeah. he still looked really solid yeah. Going on to the, to the left full there. Your um, mate. Well, my mate not your mate no. um, <laughs> Ward didn't do too much didn't now, the thing that annoys me about him is every time he crosses the ball, he has his head down. <laughs> yeah, he's a weird technique. He just yeah. he just doesn't look for where he's gonna pick the ball. And fair enough, like if you're kind of if you're Luka Modric and you're setting up Cristiano Ronaldo, at least you know where he's gonna be. But like in the Champions League final there against Juve, but if it <laughs> and folks and it's close to Ronaldo now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, he just—he, I was watching him yesterday, and every single time he went to cross the ball, he just had his head down. Didn't even look to see who was in the box. Yeah. It was just head down, try to cross, and he didn't even beat the first man. Now, I'm not saying like, uh, it, I, it was just yesterday. I didn't think he had his best game. I don't think he's absolutely terrible, mm. but um, in the longer run, I would like to see. And the Stevens will be Ireland's right back or left back in a year's time. I'll call it now. And the Stevens will be Ireland's left back in a year's time. Yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah, uh, on to uh, Glenn Whelan uh, seven I mean he, decent game it was his job it was always a Glenn Whelan game yeah. wasn't it just yeah, really I mean, efficient we won't even go into it too much yeah. just uh, if you've seen Glenn Whelan play for <laughs> Ireland in a win just that's how we won that's just him uh, as far as uh, Hendrick another uh, another <laughs> example just a Jeff Hendrick game again yeah. he just drives yeah. forward doesn't he he just gets the ball and he just gives such direction he runs, he runs at every team we play and and quite well as well. world class yeah. Barnes. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a bit. He's got a cut a little bit. Yeah, it looks good. It looks, yeah, good. looks yeah. better now. It was a bit shaggy. He before. used to have. It. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. He used to be. It. But Jeff, whatever you're doing, keep doing. It. Uh, how are you out there? Um, We've already spoken about really man of the match, man of the match yeah. performance. Um, Brady uh, eight, very solid. Robbie Brady esque performance. I think he, he was a little bit more influential yesterday than normal. Yeah, like um, actually with the ball at his feet. Yes. Yeah. But he looked very, very, very uh, confident. He was pulling off flicks uh, and, yeah. and, and he was toying a bit with the opposition. I remember me and you were watching it and we were laughing yeah. about how he just pinged the ball back to Christy, yeah, like, Christy he was just, back, yeah. like he was just training. <laughs> like he just, just took the piss a bit yesterday. But uh, yeah. Hayes, I mean, he didn't do much to, to, t- to, to shine light on himself. I've, but seen, I've seen Johnny Hayes in Scotland like a couple of times for Aberdeen this year and he looked really, really good and he just destroying people. But then again, he's playing against like Paul Bland. He's playing in Scotland. Like, <laughs> uh, it's like Andy Stevens playing down there. And oh, sorry, I've been <laughs> championship next year. Yeah. Uh, uh, Johnny Hayes has also been championship next year as well. He's a 1.2 million bid accepted from Cardiff for him for well, Aberdeen. That's good so it might get him a little bit more competitive game time. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Walters, captain the side. Captain's performance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, solid nine. Uh, oh, yeah. With Arta, I mean, you guys can choose if you think uh, someone else deserved a better rating, you can let us know in the comments. But um, yeah, Walters. He, he led the line very well. I mean, uh, we spoke about before going into the game, the likes of Darren Murphy and Dave McGoldrick being our only other real options in the squad. I mean, we're really tight up there. It's, it's shown when Shane Long gets injured and we're in a bit of trouble. Does Sean McGuire have a day off? <laughs> I'm sure he can does. He do, can he do the line? Robbie Keane looked fit in that testimonial. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Polish League's finished as well, isn't it? Yeah, Killian Terran <laughs> can come back now. <laughs> He's Polish League finished yesterday. So. Right, well, we'll run through the substitutes quite quick then. Westwood, uh, seven. It, he made a good few saves when he came on. I think he's actually made a really good case for himself to start next Sunday. Yeah. I don't think he will. I think O'Neill trusts Randolph. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking like Kieran Westwood. I'm just trying to get All in right, tune with <laughs> um, Yeah, I... I think you're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> O'Neill's going to stick with Randolph, um, but Westwood has made a really, really strong case. Does he have really to think about it now? I think he does have to think about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> just a weird one. It's, 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 a weird, it's a weird one with goalies because if he drops Randolph, his confidence could go for a good now. Yeah, uh, especially with not playing a club, not being first yeah, exactly. at club level he, now. Like he really did happens. come out and say, "That's what happens at the end of the next or the start of the next season when Randolph can get back into that West Ham team." Well, did, he, he did. He did come out and say that the Ireland games are starting to get rid of the demons from, and then that happened the other day. But yeah. um, <laughs> Pierce, he had a pretty average game. Give him a six. Yeah. Uh, Hulahin, I thought he was he he was 
quite good when he came on. He always does a solid job and he's always very yeah. influential. Any chances that are usually great come through him. I think going forward he'll be uh what? it's not just saying about him. <laughs> oh god, here we go again. <laughs> um, I think going forward though with Hulan, he'll like he will be great for coming off the bench. I don't think yeah. the legs are fully there anymore. Yeah. yeah. I'd um, have to say I, I was a huge advocate for him before, but after seeing the way we set up on Sunday against Uruguay with the one and the two rather than the two and the one, yeah. I think he has to go from the starting eleven. Yeah, but I keep meaning around the squad. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I, as much as we joke that I hate him, I'd have him in the squad. I think he deserves being in the squad, but everyone talks about him starting constantly, and I don't think he's really good enough to start ahead of Arthur and Hendrick and McCarthy and stuff like that when they're all fit. I just, he's not that good that he warrants being in there ahead of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, he, what he used to. Now he's just catching on a bit. He's nearly 35. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, uh, the main man, uh, Jimmy Mack, yeah, full hero. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he really showed his determination and stuff like that when he came on. And uh, I just, I wish every player had his, his heart when he puts yeah. on the green jersey. Imagine Fantastic. all the English players had the heart he had. They'd win every World Cup. Imagine one of the heart he had. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Ross uh, give, has the heart. Give him a, 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 an eight. Yeah. Uh, Daryl Murphy a seven because of his assist for McLean's yeah, ball. He didn't do a lot of yeah, it. Well, 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 I thought he did. He, he was like a battering ram a few times and he got in, but then when he got, came to the finish, it's just the same old story. Yeah, he just doesn't like, do much for me. And he, sco- he scored yeah. goals at club level, but he just never done it for Alan's yeah. One goal mm. in what, 36 maybe appearances for him now? That's 32. Man, 32 it? now. If he used to lead the line on Sunday, I don't expect yeah. us to get a sniff really, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. and as far as McGeady, uh, non applicable. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for watching <laughs> Irish Football Fan TV. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and leave your comments below. Thank you.